All right, guys, got another beer for you. All right, guys, got another beer. For Alright guys, got another beer review for you today. Um, today is another beer from Marks and Spencers. It says it's brewed specifically for Marks and Spencers, but I never know with these sorts of beers whether they've just had unique license or if the brewery in question already brews the beer and they've just said, well, you can have exclusive rights and we'll give you a special label. Um, but yeah, not that it matters because, you know, it's a great way to get some really interesting beers into the supermarket and to the wider audience. But yeah, we're going to Kent today, so this episode is dedicated to Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews. I'll put his YouTube and his Facebook page down below. Check him out, really great guy, does some really good reviews. And uh, yeah, he seems to drink a lot of the beers that I really like or really want to drink. And uh, yeah, we've got the Nine Hop Kent Pale Ale, which is brewed by Westerham Brewery in Crockham Hill, Kent. Never had anything from this brewery, I don't believe. And uh, yeah, this is brewed with all Kentish hops. Uh, clocking in at 4%, I'll quickly read you what it says on the bottle. Uh, a huge charge of hoppy citrus, lemony aromas balanced by a multi smooth finish. Then on the back it talks about oast houses, which are a familiar feature of the landscape in Kent, the Garden of England. Their unique shape was specifically designed for the drying of hops. About this beer, this Kent Pale Ale has nine different types of Kent bred and grown hops. They include Target, Goldings, Pilgrim, Sovereign, Progress, First Gold, WGV, Bramling Cross and fin Finchcox, Spirit of Kent. A perfect match for spicy curries and is also great with smoked fish or fish and chips. So uh, yeah, sounds like a pretty damn versatile beer. Um, yeah, what a, what a cocktail of hops. Um, I have had like multi hopped beers before and I don't just mean like one or two where they've gone like to eight to nine and I don't know it's probably because of my palate but I've never really been able to like see anything too special with you know lots of different hops thrown in and though they change like the style aroma and all that sort of thing uh, but yeah I've never really noticed anything too special uh, maybe you can't really get anything too special from using so many hops. I'm sure the homebrewers out there will be able to clarify that with me, whether it's a useful thing or not. But I suppose in this, in, in this instance, it's a great way to promote Kent hops. And I've, I recognise a lot of them, but most of them I wouldn't be able to tell you, oh, that's, you know, a Goldings hop. Oh, that's Target. You know, I'm not pro level yet. I'm not even amateur level. But anyway, enough of that. Bottle itself, really nice and bold. It's got a really nice contemporary, simple look to it. Nice use of colour. Um, yeah, it's like got that greenish, hoppy sort of look. So, yeah, it's really all about the hops with this one, it seems. Nice and bold. Carries on to the back nicely. Got some nice information. Doesn't actually tell you too much. And, uh, yeah, a nice little bit of writing on the neck bottle. On neck bottle? Neck label. And then the most patriotic British bottle cap you will ever see. So yeah, it's presented really nicely, and uh, I must admit, it's the fact that it's a nine hop pale ale, that's what drew me to it when I was in Marks and Spencer's. So anyway, it looks really good so far. Let's see what it looks, smells, and tastes like. A uh, nice bit of barrel smoke there, not too much. And uh, yeah, not really getting anything on the neck, more like a, I'm getting like a spicy lager aroma on the neck, but hopefully, you know, it'd be a bit more exciting in the glass. You'll have to excuse me, I've literally got like a little bit of spit in the back of my throat that I can't get rid of. And uh, yeah, beer in a glass, I'm just going to pour it all in. I'm not sure if this is bottle conditioned or not, so I'll save a little bit at the end, give it a little bit of a shake up. But uh, yeah, beer in a glass, um, to be honest, that could easily be just a lager or a pilsner. Um, yeah, orangey, wheaty, that sort of thing. Um, let's see what it looks like when you pour the rest of it in. Again, don't know if this is bottle conditioned or not. But yeah, when everything's in the glass, uh, ever so slight haze. I'm guessing that's from the hops. Um, but yeah, still relatively clear. Got a nice steady amount of carbonation there. 
and be a pod with about one finger's worth of foamy fluffy white head and uh yeah it looks really nice in the glass but uh yeah i don't know looking at it from this angle um it has got those like amberish sort of hues that you get for pale ales but when it's in the light properly it, i don't know it just looks like a slightly darker lager but anyway let's give it a sniff cheers it's got a very savory sort of smell to it it's like got a breadiness there and i, I don't know if it's just me but if i've got like sort of like an ashtray sort of smell yeah it's like a, a smokiness there but not like smoked beer or like barbecue smokiness but like literal like cigarette smoke i suppose if you wanted to be you know, pretentious you could say it was like pipe smoke or something like that but yeah it smells burnt it's all like a burnt bread but it's got like a dankness to it ever ever so slight zesty notes but nothing really picking up in that regard yeah grass cuttings it's a really i don't want to say a strange smelling beer but i've not really smelt a beer like that before i'm guessing a lot of this aroma is coming from maybe a specific type of hop in the cocktail i've no idea anyway bit of a weird smell it doesn't really look too much like what i consider a pale ale but let's see what it tastes like cheers that to me just i don't know it just tastes like either a pilsner or a lager to be honest The only real hop character I'm getting there is like a, a hoppy bitterness. But I'm not picking up, what's this sound there, Nick? A huge charge of hoppy citrus and lemony aromas. Did not really pick up that in the smell. And uh, aromas balanced by a multi smooth finish. It is quite smooth. Uh, not too heavy, but it's not light like a lager or a pilsner. But yeah, this is a weird little beer. Um, there's really not much going on, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. It just tastes like a slightly spicier than usual lager or pilsner. Um, I'm really not getting the nine hops in there. And it's almost as if maybe some of them have like cancelled you know another sort of hop out i don't know and just neutralize the beer because there's really really nothing going on it's really dull it is slightly spiced very bitter you know, bitter throughout but not getting any grassy tones not getting any malty tones not getting any hoppy fruity zesty sort of tones either um yeah i'm really quite disappointed by that one to be honest i was expecting a hell of a lot more um so i i don't know there's just something about it which it it takes it's like a solidly crafted beer but flavor wise there's nothing going on so i'm gonna give this and i feel slightly guilty for giving it a score like this but i'm giving this a 4.5 out of 10 it's just very below average average would be just dull but this is just, I don't know, it tastes confused to me. Um, and I don't know whether it could just be, you know, a questionable batch or a questionable bottle. Uh, maybe, you know, the fact that I flew from England to Germany with it in my suitcase, that could have done something in the travels. Um, I'll probably have to revisit this when I'm back in England. But yeah, for now, standing on its own merits and standing with other pale ales and other really hoppy, you know concoctions yeah it's a 4.5 out of 10 for me really genuinely disappointed with it but i can finish it perfectly um it go great with like it says curry fish and chips uh did myself some you know cheese and ham like sausage roll type thingies it'll go well with them it'll go well with me 
They'll go well with meals. It's subtle enough to do that. But yeah, on its own. Yeah, very, very uninteresting and not very exciting. So yeah, if you want to find out more about the brewery and this beer, I will put links down below. If anybody else has put up reviews of this one, they will be in the description box also, so you can uh, get a much more rounded and much more informative opinion. And um, yeah, if you've tried this beer, let me know your thoughts and opinions. What's your favourite beer from this brewery? What's your favourite Kentish brewery? Um, yeah, check out my Pale Ale playlist down below. Check out the Marks and Spencers playlist down below. And yeah, subscribe to the channel for more beer reviews. Thank you guys for watching, and I shall see you all later. Cheers.